Hello and welcome to the Market Capitalist. I am Dominica Johnston. It is 2012 and 2011 has come and gone. 2011 for most investors will be remembered as a rough year. Started off well, had some rough patch in the middle, and it just kind of deteriorated after that and never really recovered. So hopefully 2012 brings better um, upside for your portfolio, but who knows what the future holds. In this week's edition of Barron's, which is the Wall Street Journal's really headline major investment newspaper that comes out each weekend, they had the start of, it's usually a two or three part segment of a round table of really the top 10 investors, I would say at least in the United States, if not worldwide. And these are, these are major investors that are typically heads of groups like PIMCO and other major financial organizations. They essentially gathered this group to discuss where they think the market's headed in 2012. And I'll tell you the general thing that I'm getting from it, at least from the first part, is that there's a lot of skepticism and wariness in terms of where really these investors think the market's headed. Nobody has very strong convictions except the conviction that there's going to be some volatility throughout the year and it could be major or it could be um, minor compared to the past few years. So with that said, I think from my point of view, moving forward in 2012, the biggest takeaway that I would give to investors is don't be afraid to take a profit. So, and don't be afraid to buy in when you know the old saying is blood's running in the streets. If you assume that this year is going to have a decent amount of volatility with major macroeconomic themes continuing from 2011, like Europe's debt crisis, you're going to have opportunities to buy low in the market. Now, it takes a lot of conviction to do that because when people are panicking, you know, it's very difficult to go against the grain. So, I think if you prepare your mind prior to such things happening, you're in a lot better place to be able to pull the trigger in such um, opportunistic cases. On the other side of that, going back to don't be afraid to take a profit, there's going to be swings to the upside in the year. And when you see that, there's always the temptation to say, well, tomorrow will be even brighter, so why should I sell today? That's another psychological um, impediment that a lot of people face when investing. Being able to take that profit, ring the register and say, okay, I'm out of here. I've made my 10, 20, 30% gain, whatever it is, and I'll sit on the sidelines and wait for a better opportunity to come. We're in a very volatile market, and I don't think that's going to change in 2012. The way that, um, the main thing that I see is rates are going to continue to be low, and therefore the stock market turns into one of the only games in town in terms of a place where investors can go with a lot of liquidity to essentially make a profit and get out quickly. Conversely, you have the real, so let me give you another example. So there's the real estate market. If I go in the real estate market, I can't go daily in, in and out, in and out, and buy homes and sell them or apartments or whatever it is. Whereas the stock market, I can. And a money market account or a regular savings account, CDs, whatever you want to use for an example, you're lucky if you're going to get 1% over the long haul. So that makes it very difficult for investors to go anywhere besides the equity market. And again, that makes things more volatile because you have people, traders especially, using margin, using other financial tools to go in and make a short-term profit and look that way. So it's almost like you're forced to behave the way the market is behaving if you're going to succeed. Now, that is not to say that you can't be the type of investor that sits waits patiently, and then says, hey, we're having a lot of downside. You know, we've had four days straight where the market's lost X percent each day. I think it's time to buy. And the most important thing, in my perspective, is to be able to identify companies beforehand and say, these are the companies I want to have a position in. This is the price that I'd like to pay for them. If the market does fall to that price, I'm going to buy them. Because typically... Companies, unless there's something horrible that goes on with the company, a lot of these downturns that, let's, let's use an example, ExxonMobil. 
ExxonMobil goes down by 20%, well, unless something horrible happened where they had an oil field blow up or something to that extent, it's macroeconomic trends that are pulling the company down. It's not that the company is a bad company, it's just that people are projecting slower growth, let's say, in Europe or in developing economies, and therefore they're pricing that into the stock. Well, whether or not that's relevant is to be debated, and a lot of times it isn't, because a lot of times it's short-sighted thinking, where, oh, we're going to panic and think, you know, growth is going to go negative, everybody's going to go into a recession. Well, usually when people are panicking, their perception's a lot worse or, on the flip side, a lot better than what things are really going to be. So, as an investor, use that to your advantage. I think 2012 is going to be a volatile year, but with that, if you're prepared, you could benefit as an investor either in the short term or the long term. So, in a nutshell, 2012, be prepared for good or bad. Don't be afraid to take a profit and don't be afraid to go and buy when things are looking really bad. Thank you for watching as always, themarketcapitalist.com. Well, regular posts updated you know, weekly. Thank you again.